In this video, I'd like to introduce you the concept of what we call logarithmic differentiation. So we're going to use logarithms to help us solve what look like complex derivative problems. And so some of the properties to remember about logarithms that are going to be helpful are one that log base a of x to the power of r is equal to r times log base a of x. So you can pull the exponent on the argument of the logarithm down in the front. Another, 2 is log base a of x times y is equal to log base a of x plus log base a of y. And 3, log base a of x over y is equal to log base a of x minus log base a of y. So, of course, these um, properties stand for the natural logarithm as well. And so you'll look at properties 1, 2, and 3, and they're exactly the same for the natural logarithm. So what we're going to do is when we use our logarithms in what we call logarithmic differentiation, we're going to use a natural log because that is one that is more straightforward for us to differentiate. So we can combine these properties with what we know about implicit differentiation to significantly simplify some complex derivative problems. So I think you're really going to like the way this works. So for example, let's consider y equals x plus 1 squared times x squared plus 2x minus 1 cubed over x minus 2 to the 4th power and all that raised to the 5th power. And suppose we were asked to find dy dx. So if you were to do this with what you've learned so far, you could certainly use the chain rule, but you'd have to use that multiple times in conjunction with both the quotient rule and the product rule. So it's certainly doable, but it is going to take some extra work. So a better approach might be to use the properties of logarithms first and then to differentiate using what we know about implicit differentiation. So let me show you how this is going to work. So we're going to start with that expression, y equals 2, all of that stuff raised to the fifth power. And then we're just going to apply the natural log to both sides of that equation. And we can certainly do that because it's an equation. As long as we do the same thing to the left and the right, then we're fine. Now we're going to start to apply some of those properties on the right-hand side. So the first property we're going to apply was property 1. And so if you look back at property 1, you know that you can take the exponent of the argument of the logarithm and bring it to the front. So you see on the right-hand side, we brought the 5 that was the exponent down. Now notice that what we've done is we've broken up all of the argument on the inside of the logarithm. So let's look at these pieces. So we've got the natural log of x plus 1 squared plus the natural log of x squared plus 2x minus 1 cubed. So that's all of the stuff that's in the numerator. And notice that that was multiplied, so we add it. Then that last term we get is minus the natural log of x minus 2 to the fourth power. Notice that was negative because that term was in the denominator, so it was divided. So remember, properties 2 and 3 said if you're adding, then you could, I'm sorry, if you're multiplying, you can add, which is what we're doing in the numerator. And if you're dividing, then you subtract, and that's what we were doing in the denominator. So we just applied properties 2 and 3 to get those three terms in the bracket there. Now let's look at them each. So we've got um, the natural log of y on the left-hand side still. But notice this term. Now we're applying property 1 because 2 was the exponent, and now it's brought down to the front. Similarly, 3 was the exponent in the second term, so it's brought out in front. And finally, 4 was the exponent in the third term, and that's been brought out in front as well. Okay, so now we're actually in a position where we could start to differentiate. So let's consider the left-hand side the natural log of y. Well, first we know that the natural log of u, whatever u may be, is always going to be 1 over u. But because we're now looking at y as a dependent variable, we have to also get the dy dx term, which comes from the chain rule. And then the right-hand side, this is really going to work out nicely because it's just going to be a combination of a bunch of natural log of u chain rule problems. So we still got the 5, but we look at that first term, which was 2 ln x plus 1, and we know that that is just going to be 2 over x plus 1, because the derivative of natural log of x plus 1 is just 1 over x plus 1. Now look at that second term. The second term, there's a 3, which is a constant, which just hangs out. But now we have the natural log of u, and so the derivative of u, which is the inside, is 2x plus 2. And then that's always going to be over whatever that u was. So that's over x squared plus 2x minus 1. 
For that last term, because the x minus 2, the derivative of that is just 1, then that's going to be the constant that's in front, minus 4 over x minus 2. So we've differentiated the left-hand side using implicit differentiation. And we're differentiating the right-hand side just by using the natural logs derivative and the chain rule. So look at this expression here. Now it looks like all we need to do as we do with all of our implicit differentiation problems is solve for dy dx. So let's look at it fresh up there. So we just need to remember from the very beginning of the problem we were told that y was equal to the quantity x plus 1 squared times x squared plus 2x minus 1 cubed over x minus 2 to the fourth power and all of that to the fifth power. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by y. And when I do that, I'm going to get dy dx is equal to, well, 5 times all that stuff that was in the purple times the stuff that's in the black, which is y. And so there's my solution.